Now, I don't know about you, but I know when I personally go camping, it seems like my wife and I bring enough stuff for an entire house, right? Which it basically is, it's a home on wheels. So chances are you're going to have a lot of stuff with you. And you can't just throw that in haphazardly. There is an order and a way you should load a travel trailer, which we're going to cover today. And it's important for a number of reasons. One, as you're moving down the road, things are going to shift. You wanna make sure that things aren't breaking, things aren't getting damaged. And that's kind of the obvious one, right? That's what a lot of people think of when loading the travel trailer. But something a lot of people don't think about is weight distribution. And if you're not considering that, you can be in trouble fairly quickly. So let's head inside and get to it. The first thing to know when it comes to loading your travel trailer is what's commonly referred to as the 60-40 rule. And essentially what that is, is if your axle is like the midway point, you wanna put 60% of the weight in the front half and 40% behind the axle. So the reason for that is if you put too much weight behind the axle, what will happen is with all that weight, as you're driving down the road, your travel trailer will tend to fishtail. And that is a quick way to lose control and uh, have a terrible accident. So again, you wanna try to put more of it in the front. Now, that's not to say you wanna put 100% of the weight in the front and leave it in the back, because that also is going to throw off your weight distribution and it's gonna add a lot to the tongue weight, which in turn may overload your tow vehicle. The second tip is to strategically load your heavy items. You wanna make sure there's a pretty even balance, both uh, from the length and width of your trailer when loading up those heavy items. Obviously, you don't want to stack them up high. You want them as close to the floor as possible, whether that's inside the RV or in some of your outside storage like your pass-through. Obviously, if it's up in a cabinet, there's a good chance that uh, or a higher propensity that those items can fall out. Now, even though that these are latched, if it's a heavy enough item and it hits that door, it can fall out and do some damage to the RV, which is definitely not something, uh, definitely not a way you wanna start off your camping trip uh, or something you wanna see when you get back home. Also, it's a good idea to take, a, take into account where some of your larger appliances are. In a smaller RV like this, we don't have a ton of weight here, but in some of your larger travel trailers, especially if you're talking about things like having a residential refrigerator, that's considerable weight in one side and one part of the RV. So when you're loading up your heavy items, you wanna to try to make sure you balance that as best possible throughout the RV. With your bigger, heavier items out of the way, now it's time to start loading up some of the light stuff. Uh, and this is where people tend to get really creative. And you know that's thing where things like a sink is a great spot to load things up. The bathtub is an excellent spot. Obviously, some of your lighter items you can put in your overhead cabinets. Uh, another tip that I often hear RVers use is to take a lot of your blankets, pillows, right, extra sheets, towels, and kind of pack that around some of your sensitive items. Not only does that help prevent them from moving, but if things do shift, hopefully it'll help protect some of those items as well. Tip number four, and something that a lot of people don't think about when loading travel trailers, is the weight of your holding tanks. So if we look at, let's say, the fresh tank, uh, on average, a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. So for quick math, if you have, we'll say a 50 gallon fresh water tank and you fill that sucker all the way up, that is 400 pounds in one location on the travel trailer. That can make a big difference in the towability of the travel trailer. So it's always good to know how much is in your tanks using your levels inside. And again, knowing where those tanks are located. Now, if it's a travel trailer like this, locating the tanks is fairly simple. I mean, you can get down underneath and we can see right there is our black tank, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's a little more difficult in those situations. I do recommend reaching out to the salesperson where you got your RV from or reaching out to the manufacturer so you can locate where those tanks are. So if you're going somewhere, uh, a lot of times, if it's your first trip out or your trip to your destination, right, you're going camping, your freshwater tank may be full because you don't have city water hookup where you're going and your wastewater tanks will be empty. Great, you can kind of load around that once you know those tanks are located. However, heading back, if you don't have a dump station at that specific campground, well, now we have a different situation, right? Because now we have water in the wastewater tanks and chances are our freshwater tank has been almost depleted or nearly so, or at least it will be lower than when you left. So again, it's a good idea just to kind of keep those things in the back of your mind when you're loading up your travel trailer. The next thing we want to look at is tongue weight. Uh, this is one of those things where it's not generally as much of an issue on travel trailers as it is on fifth wheels with pin weight, but your average tongue weight will be somewhere between 10 to 15% of the weight in the trailer most times. 
As we talked about the 60-40 rule and why, again, you wanna make sure you do still make sure you put weight in the back halves, because if you load it all in the front, that's gonna increase your tongue weight and that can start to cause suspension issues. So if your travel trailer is all loaded up and you come outside and you know that you're supposed to be riding fairly level, but if this is your tow vehicle and this is your trailer and you're going like this, that's a problem, right? That's gonna be bad on your suspension. That's going to lift up the front of your vehicle. You're not gonna stop as well. You're not gonna be able to turn as well. You're gonna have a whole host of issues. Uh, so it may be a good idea to go in and redistribute some weight. With that being said, another very common item when we talk about travel trailers is a weight distribution hitch. And it helps correct some of that. It will redistribute the weight to help even everything back out. Now that's not to say that if you have more tongue weight than your tow vehicle is capable of, that your weight distribution hitch is gonna fix that because it will not. That is not something you want to do. But again, in order to help correct that, in order to help redistribute that weight, that weight distribution hitch is an awesome option. A lot of times you can get sway bars on there as well for sway control, so the travel trailer is a lot straighter going down the road, and it really helps eliminate a lot of the uh, weight distribution issues when loading and unloading a trailer. Also, if you're wondering how to hook one up or how to adjust it, we do have videos for that as well, just to make the process a little bit easier. Tip number six is to secure everything. And again, this is something that kind of makes sense, right? If you've ever moved before um, and you have to play the master game of Tetris, that's kind of what this is for the RV, but you're taking it to the next level because you have so much stuff inside. It's not just the back of an empty box truck and you have perfectly sized boxes. So you have to start to get a little creative. Uh, a pro tip, if you've never been RVing before, is use bins, baskets, uh, you know, totes for a lot of your loose items. They will make it easier to stack and they won't fall over or they won't tip, right? They'll generally be able to stay in place. Uh, another really good tip is utilize the storage in the RV. So what I mean by that is something like this. Underneath the dinette, a lot of times if you lift up a cushion, there will be a finger hole like this. You can lift it up and boom, just like that, you have all that excellent storage space. And when you put things in there, there's a good chance that those things aren't going to move around. Um, now, that being said, if it's something that that's going to be its home when you get to the campsite, even better, right? If you can kind of preload that, it's stuff you don't have to get to super often. That's awesome if you can manage that. But you definitely want to utilize those spaces like the space underneath your dinettes, like your kitchen sink, like your bathtub, or underneath the master bed. All of those are perfect. Another good one is where you kind of have some natural walls. So for example, if we drop this table down, you have all this space underneath in between the two dinettes. In the bunk, you can see that if you turn around right there, right, you have wall space on both sides of the bunk. So things just aren't, uh, they don't have as much room to slide around. And again, make sure you try to keep those heavy items down to the floor. If you're able to strap, use bungee straps to strap things in, that just helps secure things that much more. All right, folks, and my final tip is after you have everything loaded in your travel trailer and you have everything distributed the way you want it to, is to take a final weight measurement. Now, you can do this a number of different ways. One of the easiest ones that a lot of customers do just for a quick calculation is use something like the Curt Better Way Mobile Scale. Uh, with that, you can take the measurement right in your driveway. Or uh, some other people, if you have a truck stop that's nearby that has scales, you can certainly pull in there and use those scale as well, scales as well to make sure you're getting the proper measurements. Now, what are we looking for? Well. It's gonna be a couple different things. One, you wanna make sure you're not over your GVWR or your GAWR. Those stand for gross vehicle weight rating and gross axle weight rating, respectively. Those numbers and all the numbers we really need when we're talking about loading can basically be found right here on almost every towable unit. It'll be on the off-door side toward the front. And you can see that right there, GVWR, GAWR. You wanna make sure you're not going to be over either of those. Another thing that's really important is this this sticker that you will also find, which is tire and loading information. Not only will this tell you what your tire ratings need to be at, which you want to make sure you have your, uh, your tires at the right pressures. We've done a video on that as well, if you're curious. Uh, but another thing that you, you want to make sure is that you're not overloading. And you will see right here, for example, this one, you cannot go over 750 pounds. That's the max amount of cargo you can put in here. Personally, from a safety standpoint, folks, I recommend trying to keep it closer to about 85% of that max whenever possible, just to give you a little bit of leeway. 
All right, folks, and that pretty much wraps it up for the loading and distributing weight in your travel trailer video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you subscribe so you can be one of the first ones to see all our new and updated how-to and troubleshooting content.